In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to give you some tips on how to use the Crop, Zoom, and Pan tool in the most recent version of PowerDirector. I've had several subscribers who saw earlier tutorials and wanted to know how it works in the most recent version, and even one who recommended that we try it on this moving bobber. So we'll do that in this tutorial. Please look at the following example, and then we'll show you a bit about how we did this. So to start, we're going to click on the video and click on the Tools button above the timeline and choose our Crop, Zoom, and Pan. The Crop, Zoom, and Pan tool has three major re regions on the screen. We have the Edit region in the center. We have the Preview screen in the upper right, which is very important. The Aspect Ratio, it will inherit from your project. Mine is 16 by 9. You can change it if you so wish. The position is 0.5.5 right in the middle of the screen and the scale is 100% so we're full screen. And we're maintaining our aspect ratio. There is no rotation. We'll look at rotation toward the end of this tutorial. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to focus in on the bobber. Now the way you do that is you use keyframes. If you're unfamiliar with keyframes, a keyframe basically records the rotation the magnification and the location of the video at any particular frame. And so we have this triangle. I'm going to move the triangle over. And we have the time code in the lower right. And let's say at this point we want to zoom in on the bobber. We're still full screen. To set a keyframe, I click on the diamond with a plus sign to the right of it. And it, put one, it puts a keyframe right on top of my diamond at 2 seconds and 20 frames. Now if I want to move, I'll move all of them together. So if I just drag the triangle, it moves not only uh, on the timeline, but it also changes where the keyframe is. If I want to set a different keyframe, I have to click somewhere else on the timeline. And then I do a plus again to set another keyframe. So it's a little bit tricky in that sense. Now to move between keyframes, we have three. The default is one at the beginning. And you just move between the arrow that points to a diamond to the left. We go all the way back to the first one. Or we can go, using the same, going to the right. Now when you run out of keyframes, it will gray out, either on the right side or on the left side. So that's how you easily can move between the keyframes. So we basically haven't done any editing yet. We've just set a few keyframes. Let's look at this keyframe here, at, which is now at 3 seconds and 4 frames. Let's change some things. If I want to zoom in on the bobber, I can grab the handle on any of the four corners and then take the blue ball, and if I want it absolutely centered, I'll put it right there. Now, what PowerDirector does is it gives you these little arrows with a little yellow ball that shows you kind of the tracking. I find that more confusing than helpful. I'd rather focus on what I see on my keyframes, on the timeline, my time code, and what I see in the preview screen. But if you find it useful, you can actually uh, click on these and move them and do all kinds of things. So what we're going to do is look at the results so far. I'm going to click here on the left side. We're going to watch it zoom in. It zooms in to that keyframe and locks in on the bobber, and then it zooms out again. Why? Well, because the third keyframe will pop to it is full screen. So we zoomed out again. If I want to change this one as well, I just move to it. And then I could make this so this as well is slightly zoomed in on our bobber. And we can actually chase it around the screen. So I'm going to play. And if you look in the preview screen, you see what people are going to see. Now, the, it popped out of frame here a little bit on this side. So I'm going to move back here, set another keyframe, and we're going to move over here. And it looks like it locked it in. And we'll move again. It's going up and down, back and forth. That looks pretty good. Oh, and now a little bit of the motion was where I don't want it. Set another keyframe chase it back over here a little bit. Let's actually zoom out just a bit. 
because you can do both at the same time. And move again. You can get a tight, as tight a shot as you want or as long distance a shot as you prefer. Let's set another keyframe right here. And I'm going to move it over a little bit. And I want to do something else. I want to rotate it. So I have a rotation value here. You have to type it in. I'm going to do 4, 5, 45 degrees and press enter on the keyboard. And now I have the water going sideways. But I also have another issue. You notice on each corner I have a little bit of black in the preview. And when you rotate, this is something you have to be careful about. So you can actually shrink it down a little bit. You'll see the pink lines. But I have to make sure every corner is inside the visible frame. So what we've actually done between this keyframe and the one that's highlighted is we've zoomed in and rotated it. Let's go back here and play this. Watch the preview screen in the upper right. And you'll see we have turned it so the water is at a 45 degrees, but we're still zoomed in. And again, if I were to do this a little more carefully here, I'd probably move it a little bit to the right. But I can, can only zoom in so far without making sure I don't go outside the recording screen and get some black areas. And then we'll go over here, we'll set another keyframe, and we'll turn our value back to zero. A little easier to work with when it's not rotated. Press Enter, and we're back. But it gives you a way in which you can do a, chase an object around the screen as we're doing now, or you can take a static shot and you can zoom in and move around on different objects that are on your static shot uh, and add a lot of energy and interest in what you're doing. If you want to start from the beginning again, you click Reset on the lower left corner. When you're done, click on OK. And then you can play and watch the video and go back and edit it as many times as you want to using Crop, Zoom, and Pan in the current version of CyberLink PowerDirector.